Hello and welcome to this lesson on communication. Um, so the lesson objective, just to introduce that, is what are the different methods of communication available to a business and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each method? OK, so we're, we're thinking about how businesses communicate mainly with their staff, OK, the people within the business that work for them. OK, so before we do that, just to get an understanding of some, in terms of what that word communicate means, it's a verb. So it's a doing word. Um, and if you communicate with someone, you share or exchange information with them, for example, by speaking, writing or using equipment. So I'm communicating with you now. I'm communicating with you verbally, um, I'm speaking to you, and you're also looking at information with your eyes, so I'm communicating with you in two different ways here. So I'm allowing you to read, and I'm also allowing you to listen. Okay, so when we're talking about communication within a business, so communication is the act or an instance of communicating or imparting or exchanging information, ideas or feelings. And communication is an exceptionally important part of being a human being. Um, communication is a very, very important part of business because with poor communication, then messages are simply lost within an organisation. So it really is important that businesses are able to communicate not only with their customers to be able to sell things, but to, for their staff so that it enables them to work effectively. OK, little staff activity which I want you to do, so you'll, you'll pause the video, is to just have a little think. Think about all the different ways in which a business can communicate with its staff. So there are a variety of different ways a business can send messages to its staff. OK, now, if you need a little bit of support and help on that, then perhaps ask somebody at home who can help you. Um, now, what you can do is you can just create a little mind map um, about that. And just kind of literally just map out all the ways in which a business can communicate. And what I'll do is I'll go through those in a minute. I'll go through the, the important ones that you'll need for your exam. You might be able to come up with some different ones. OK, so pause the video now and have a go at the starter. OK, so hopefully you had a go at the starter and you came up with some communication methods. Um, these are mainly the ones that will be covered in the OCR business exam. OK, we have presentations. We have email and text messages. We have memo, which could be a, a new word that you guys haven't heard of. So I'm going to want you to find out about that in a bit. Uh, a letter, phone calls, meetings and video conferencing. OK, so these are the main methods of communication that a business tends to use at the moment. Now, with technology advancing very quickly, things do change. But these are some traditional and some new methods of communicating within a business. OK, so the first task that I want you to do is I want you to either use the Internet or again, you could speak to someone at home or just use your use your memory to find out and to fill out this table. Now, if you don't have a printer at home, that's absolutely no problem, because, again, you can just take each and every one of these and um, you can describe it beneath. And then just bullet point some advantages and disadvantages of each method. So, for example, um, meetings and presentations. So I would explain what a meeting is. Now, that could be something similar to what goes on in the staff room um, at school on a Monday morning, whereby we all get together and we have a meeting and a discussion about things. Now, what are the advantages of that to a business and what are the disadvantages? I mean, I can give you a disadvantage of a meeting at school, for example. What happens if a really important member of staff is, uh, is lost in traffic? Now, do they miss that message if they can't attend the meeting? So that, of course, is a problem. And if I was to compare that with sending an email, for example, I would know that they would receive the email and they could look back and check back on it later. And in a meeting, maybe if something is said out loud, it's said and then it's lost. Um, also, maybe have a little think about how how you are like. Maybe sometimes when you're sitting in lessons, do you daydream after five minutes? So sometimes meetings can go on. So I want you to investigate each and every single one of those methods of communication. Describe them and come up with some advantages and disadvantages. There's a lot of information on the Internet about this, um, which will be able to kind of help you with your research. So pause the video and get that filled out. And afterwards, I'm going to go through each and every one just briefly, just to recap. 
Okay, so here's a bit of a knowledge recap for you on each and every single one of those methods. So hopefully you've done a little bit of research and you've filled out the table if you've been going through this lesson properly. Here's a picture of a presentation going on and a meeting. Okay, so we have a PowerPoint presentation and we have a we have a young lady here delivering the PowerPoint presentation with various graphs on it. Now that's being done in a meeting here, so we have a group of people in a meeting. Now that's absolutely fine, isn't it? As a meeting, they can kind of ask questions, um, they can maybe probe the person doing the presentation about some of the graphs on there if they don't quite understand them. But again, there are disadvantages when you're sitting in a meeting because you could be daydreaming, you might not understand anything, you might not want to ask a question because you don't want to look silly in front of everyone. So that is essentially, when we're talking about a presentation, we're talking about a visual presentation and then a meeting where everyone's sitting down and, and discussing. This picture here is probably more of a presentation rather than a meeting because the person doing the presenting is actually in charge. When there's a meeting, there's, there's sometimes there's no one in charge, it's everyone getting together to come through and get some ideas up together. Okay, um, one that you guys are pretty familiar with, I would like to think so, is, um, is this form of written messaging, um, emails or SMS um, and text message as well. Um, and we use loads of different ways to message people now. Um, WhatsApp, for example, is a really good way of messaging large groups of people. Um, and that's really, really good because there's always a record of a conversation. But that sometimes is a disadvantage because you need to be very, very careful about what you write down um, because sometimes that can be open to um, people having a bit of information about you that you might not want them to have. Um, so email and text messages are what they are, a written form of information that's quite instant as well. Um, it's very, very instant and very easy for me to email somebody. It's also easy for me to email a large number of people at the same time using email because I can just copy their addresses in and send exactly the same email. OK, before you click send on an email, you need to be very, very careful about the content of the message as well. So there are a few disadvantages of that and I hope you pick those out. Next one, a letter and a memo. So they're pretty similar. The word memo stands for note. It's a little bit like a letter, but it's usually a bit of a shorter version and it might be a bit more informal, whereas this letter here is more of a formal kind of document that's being sent to someone. And this is, a, an, is an employment offer to someone. And a letter would normally be received through the post um, and through your door. However, it is sometimes received like this one here via email. OK, phone calls. Pretty simple good bit of verbal communication. It's really good to kind of have a little bit of a chat to somebody. Um, that often you, you can get a lot of information across to someone. They can ask questions, they can clarify. It's one-to-one -one type of communication. Um, if you were selling something to a company, for example, or handling a query, then it probably is better over a phone call than over an email exchange. An email exchange can go back and forward, and that's a bit of a pain. And finally, video conferencing, which has happened an awful lot um, since lockdown um, happened, um, whereby people can communicate even though they're not in the same room. So we do have five people here who are in the same room, and then a couple of people are here who are perhaps in offices in another part of the country, or maybe they're abroad somewhere, or maybe they're just not able to attend the meeting. However, they can get all of the necessary information through this piece of technology. Now, all that's required is for a... Um, for a computer um, and then some sort of webcam and then a computer in in the um, office where the meeting is taking place. So traveling doesn't really need to occur with video conferencing. OK, um, next task I want you to do, it's going to take you more than five minutes, is to just have a little think about each and every single one of those different forms of communication. And here are four different um, kind of things that need to be kind of said um, or communicated and can you please just note down the methods that you think are most suitable so we've got a formal offer of a job to excuse me a formal offer of a job to an applicant what method would be most suitable for that and why have you chosen that an important message about changes to a fire drill a message about a collection for someone's birthday or a manager needs to check in with their worker so what is the most important or the most suitable method and why have you chosen that? Some are more suitable than others. Okay, so pause the video and then have a go at each of that. Okay, now 
this I would like you to, to make sure you send this and the table back to me. You don't need to send the starter activity back to me and the activity that you just did of applying your learning, but I would like you to send this back to me. Okay, this is the most important thing because I will mark this um, and then I'll give you a grade on the basis of that. So I definitely want you to send me back task three. Okay, this is an analyze question. So remember when you see analyze, we need to see a little bit of theory in here. So we need to see you demonstrating knowledge, but I also need you to be applying that knowledge to the context of the business. Okay, so in this case, the business is Revolution Limited and they're a large computer manufacturer with, who sell computers all over Europe. Um, now, I want you to analyze one benefit and one drawback to them of using video conferencing. So you really need to be thinking of the theory of a benefit and drawback of any video conferencing. Little tip, uh, if you want to look back at the Analyze video on the YouTube channel, which will kind of give you a little bit more of assistance for how to break down those, those three marks, you're obviously going to gain three marks from writing about a drawback and three marks from writing about um, a benefit. So you kind of break it down in that way and then you're able to get six whole marks. OK, well, I hope that you found this um, video useful on the methods of communication. Um, obviously, look back at it again if you need any additional support. But please just make sure that you've got this completed task and send task three back to me for marking. OK, have a good week. Bye.